All right, so you've got this Desmos thing and you're gonna type in, you've got the find the sum and so you go, okay, so the answer is 74 and you hit submit, you get the yippee, but then you're like, I don't know, let me let me try that problem again. So you refresh it and it's uh, it's the same problem. And so you do that and there you go. And there's there's it's kind of like this one and done idea. So in comes random numbers. So check this out. Look at that, look at that, look at that. The random numbers are, are popping up, right? So the idea would be if I get the, the the problem and I do it and I get 124 and then I hit submit and I get the yippee, but I don't know, I'm, I, I might need a little bit more practice. You press the new button, uh, new numbers button and you get a new problem. How do you do that in a Desmos? I'm gonna show you right now. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into new activity and I'm gonna call this random uh, problem generator, <laughs> so to speak, demo. All right, there we go. I'm gonna click create new activity. Now I've gone ahead and I have copied a previous slide because I wanna just get us going. Uh, I want the focus to be on random, not just creating the, the problem in the first place. So what I've got here is I've got the classic setup. I've got a sketch, I've got a note, and I've got a math input uh, box. Inside, I've got some code already written. Right now in the input box, I've got dis uh, disable evaluation set to true because I don't want I don't want Desmos doing any more math for the kids than it already does. And then all of my code is right in here in the note component right now. And the way I've got it set up, it's kind of this classic setup. I've got, here's the question. This is where the question is generated. Right now it's static because I've got that 26 plus 48 hard coded. I've got a space for the answer. And then I've got uh, a when and otherwise statement for the feedback. And, and then down in the content, it dumps the question and the feedback onto the screen. So as we look at this, I click done, click preview. And now I've got 26 plus 48. I can type in the answer 74. I can hit submit. Everything is working exactly the way I want. The problem is this problem never changes. If I were to hit the refresh button, I'm going to get 26 plus 48. That's because it was hard coded right there. It's static. All right. So Let's create that randomness. So I'm going to go up here and I'm going to generate the random stuff here. All right. And then down here, put everything, everything onto the screen down here. So I'm going to separate our worlds a little bit. Okay. So now, <clears throat> First thing I'm going to do is, the, the idea is, it's really called the random number generator, the random generator. That's that's what gives us those values, right? Uh, but I don't want to have to continually type in the word random generator every single time. So I'm just going to call it R. R is equal to the random number generator. Now, in subsequent code, instead of having to type in the word random generator, I'm just going to type in the letter R. All right. Now, to create our first number, randomly generated number, and then we're going to have to do the same thing for our second randomly uh, randomly generated number. All right. So here's what we're going to do. For number one, or that num1 value, uh, I'm going to do r dot. So that's saying, OK, create a random number generator. What kind of number do you want? Well, I want an integer. And then I'm going to go from 21 to 99. So there you go. That's right there. That's the money right there. It says, take a random number generator. That's this. Give me an integer somewhere from 21 to 99. All right. So we're going to copy that. And we're going to do the exact same thing down here. Wah, bam. So now I'm creating two randomly generated numbers. So if you want to see what that's going to look like, we could kind of go down here 
I can temporarily turn off the, the content that was there and uh, I can just say oh put in the first number and the second number onto the screen that's all I want just show me the first number and the second number we're not adding them or anything quite yet if I click done and click preview well, bam there's my two numbers and if I way up here in the upper left hand corner press that refresh button it's gonna give me two new numbers well that's annoying <clears throat> having to press the refresh button all right so what I want to do is I want to create a button that allows me to just press the button and get new numbers all right so what we're gonna do is uh, let's see we are going to zoom out a little bit here and uh, I'm gonna bring in an action button and I'm not sure if it matters where I put it let's put it up here and I'm gonna call it refresh 2 all right by the way uh, oops no I'm gonna call it refresh 1 because I'm on page 1 so I always append my component names with the number of the slide I'm currently on that's one way to guarantee that all my components are uniquely named sometimes they don't have to be but oftentimes they do so that's why I uh, always append that number uh, the number of the slide I'm on so I've, I've named a button refresh one and right now it doesn't do anything all, right, I just, all I did was name it and I can down here say new problem so I've labeled the button so now it says new problem it still doesn't do anything quite yet uh, what I'm going to do is in that note where, where the random generator is creating these numbers, all I have to do is inside this, the parentheses, I'm going to type in refresh one dot press count. And so this random generator is recreated, refreshed every time we press the refresh button. Right? So when I hit preview, every time I press the new problem button, I get new numbers. So we're getting there. Yay, we're getting there. So now I'm going to go back into the code. And now uh, what I need to do is uh, let's get rid of that pretend placeholder down there. And I'm going to go back and to the original content. So it's going to it's going to post the question and then it's going to uh, include a couple lines down the feedback all right now the question right now is still static so we need to uh, we need to make this problem reflect the randomly generated numbers rather than the static number here all right so I'm gonna erase that 26 and I'm gonna do dollar sign bracket bracket and inside that bracket I'm gonna call it number num one so that says here's here's static stuff right here find the sum but then it's going to insert the variable num1 and we're gonna do the same thing for 48 we're gonna delete that 48 we're gonna do dollar sign bracket bracket and I'm gonna type in num2 All right, so now uh, that question is gonna be randomly uh, it's gonna be the static part is gonna be there on the screen down here and it's going to random it's going to insert those randomly generated numbers so if i click done click preview look at that look at that every time i hit new problem it's giving me a new problem however the issue is if i were to type in 65 it's going to say i'm wrong because it still thinks that answer is 74. all right it's because right now the answer is hard-coded it's static so I need to fix the answer so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go up here and I you know this is just um, how I kind of figured it out I'm gonna do answer I'm gonna call it answer temp all right in fact let's do a capital T answer temp and I want the answer temp to be the numeric value of and I'm going to do quote quotations and then inside that quotation I need to add num1 plus num2 but right now it doesn't know that these are variables so what I need to do is I need to put that num1 inside those dollar sign bracket bracket and there's num1 
And then I need to do the same thing with num2. I need to do dollar sign, bracket, bracket, and inside I'm gonna put that num2. So now the answer is indeed this numeric value of adding together num1 plus num2. All right. Now, the reason I have to have this answer temp value, why I can't just jump straight to the answer, is because I want Desmos to treat it as LaTeX. I don't want Desmos to treat it as a number because that allows students to just literally copy and paste. I'm gonna hit done and hit preview. It would allow students to literally copy and paste that into the answer box, click submit, and it would be marked correct. I don't want that. I want students to actually have to do the work and type in, in this case, 86. So that's why I'm using LaTeX and I'm going through that extra motion. So the, uh, the temporary answer is a numeric value adding these two variables. Now down here, I need to turn it back into uh, LaTeX, all right, into text rather than a numeric value. So I'm going to have that dollar uh, answer is equal to, and then quotations, and then I'm gonna do dollar sign, bracket, bracket, and I'm gonna insert answer temp, all right? So answer temp up here, it says, get the numeric value of num1 plus num2, and it's a number. And then down here where it says answer, it says take that number, which was called answer temp. And these quotations basically say, and turn it into text. Turn it into LaTeX is basically what it's saying. So now everything looks okay because I'm, I'm not getting any error messages. Let's click done. Let's see, and I'm gonna click preview. Uh, first off, my every time I click that button, new problem, I get a new problem. And now it says 39 plus 27. Well, first off, if I put in, copy and paste that, and put in 39 plus 27, it won't, it says, nope, no good. So then that part is good. And then uh, what is 39 plus 40, uh, 27, uh, 50, 60, 66. 66, when I cl click submit, whoa, bam, I'm correct. Now, watch what happens. I'm gonna hit new problem. Oh man, but it still has 66 in there and it's giving me this weird user thing try again well the moment the kid t clicks in there that error goes away that uh, wrong goes away uh but i don't i don't really like the fact that it says wrong right i i, I don't like that so i want it the moment the student clicks new problem this box is erased so that the student doesn't get that um, horrible message of you're wrong before they've even begun, all right? So what we're gonna do is go back into the uh, editing mode and the code that we want to use to fix that is going to live inside the input box. So I'm gonna click on the computation layer and I already have that disable evaluation as being true. So I'm gonna add a little bit more code, all right? So I'm gonna create a variable called clear it, and clear it is going to be um, activated every time that refresh one button is pressed, all right? So there we go. So every time that button is pressed, clear it happens, yeah, that, that press count happens in the clear it. All right, now there's this uh, function called, or the sync called reset on change. And it's really co cool, quotation, quotation. And then inside those quotations, I'm gonna do the dollar sign, bracket, bracket, and I'm just gonna put in clear it. All right, so every time we press the button, that refresh button to get new problem, clear it happens and then we're going to reset that input box right here so watch what happens so there's the done and all of that was inside this input box 
all of it right here, lived right here. So first off, I press the new, 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 new problem every single time and I'm getting a new, new problem every time. That's working. I see my answer is 61. I'm going to click submit. Woohoo! I got the right answer. Now here's the cool thing. When I click new problem, ah, oh, wah, bam, the thing goes away. It's cleared. I, I don't have an error message saying, eh, you're wrong before the kid has even tried. And now it is working exactly the way I wanted it to. Oh, oh what? Oh, 133. There we go. Wah, bam. And that is how you uh, go from a static problem in Desmos to randomly generated problems, which allow students to um, really not move on until they get it. And they don't have to just that one and done static problem. You better get it on that try or not. And, um, and then you just keep going and, and students can continually practice problems until they're ready to move on. All right, so there you go.